Hello, John Bloodworth here with more adventures in machine embroidery. This week I wanted to put together some of the skills and tools that I've been using over the last few weeks and create a complete project. So I designed this Polish folk art mandala. It was surprisingly easy to put together in the Hatch Embroidery Digitizing software. I started by setting my machine and hoop, then setting the centering uh, position to manual and turning off the closest join options in the embroidery settings. Then I imported the artwork that I wanted to uh, design or trace even, and this is from a design that I made just resizing it down a little and then locking that layer in place so that it doesn't move. The colour is quite intense so in, in the artwork tab I dimmed it. Now that everything is set up I'm going to go about digitising the design. As it's a radial design I really should have um, quite a lot of potential of saving time because as you can see this section and this section and just one, one flower and one dot will generally create the whole design. So I'm going to start by digitizing that central uh, area. So I will go to the digitize toolbox, digitize close shape, set it to outline single run stitch and set the color as green and then I will do the inner star first. So just left clicking at each intersection to set my point, working the way around the star and I'm going just beyond the intersection on those outer points as I want to be able to cross that over with the outer star. And then when you get to the end and you've got just the connector to go, press enter once to set the shape and then enter again to apply the line stitch, um, stitch style, sorry. Next, without changing anything, I'm going to go back in and do the outer star. So again, this is just made up of a series of left clicks. And again, when we get to the end and we've got just one section to go, press enter to connect that up and enter to set the stitch style. Now I'm going to expand the sequence um, docker here to show this um, different bits because that will be relevant soon. And next up, I'm going to do the straight line that runs up and down. So. I'll just zoom in a little bit, digitize open shape for this one. So there's no fill to um, select, single run, same color, and then I'll just start it just inside that shape. Hold down my control key as I move the mouse up and down and that will constrain the angle. And then click to set that line at the end and then press enter to apply the stitch style. Go back to the, my selection tool so that I've got the object selected. Zoom out. And then I need to go to the Create Layouts tab. Choose Circle Layout. Set the repetitions to 8. And then move this until I've got all of the lines that I need. which I think will be there, and then left click to set those in place. Next up, I will digitize the spirals. And again, for this, I'm going to digitize open shape, single run stitch, same color. And I'm using a combination of left and right clicks here. The right clicks give me the curved corners. And 
then somewhere in the middle, left click to set that, and press enter to set it in place. Now some of that, because the stitching is so small, has disappeared. So if I increase the size, I now get that back, and I'll move that into position, like so. And then from the uh, layouts toolbox, I will choose mirror copy horizontal, drag that across, and then yes, I want to merge it. Or do I? Actually, I'm going to select no, so they're two separate objects. OK, next up, I'm going to select those two objects. And again, use my layouts tool and the circle layout to repeat those around the design. Great. Next up, I want to tackle this line. So if I zoom out a little bit and then select the space. Um, actually, I don't need to digitize those. I've just realized because I can, oops, I can select them all, press Control and D to duplicate them, and that will put them right at the bottom of the stack. And then if I do a minus rotation, minus 22.5, hopefully, yes, that will work. Now, they're not as big as I need them. So if I increase the size, holding down the shift key as I click and drag on one of the corner nodes, I should get the length that I need. But now they're not quite where I need them to be in the center. So I'm going to deal with that by using the reshape tool and just moving the end node of each one. You could argue it was just as quick to do, um, oops, to digitize them and then rotate them or, or uh, do the circular layout. But I just wanted to show a variety of different ways of achieving the same goals. Right, so that's those done. Now, what I would like to digitize are the green leaves in the middle. So we're going to go in there and I will need the digitize tool, digitize closed shape. I want to make sure a fill is applied and for these ones I'm going to choose the satin stitch. I'll keep the same color and I'm actually going to start the leaf in the center here. Left click on that corner point to give it a, um, a sharp point. Right click on everything else to give it a curved point. And then when I want to connect up, again I press enter and you can see that's connected up the last shape and then to apply the stitch type, enter again. Now I'm going to change the direction of that stitching so that it runs the, the length of the leaf. Again, from the layouts, I can mirror and copy that. I'll select no for merging. Okay, that's fine. And then zoom out and back in a little bit. Select both of those. And then, of course, we're doing the circle layout again. And boom, that's those in. Uh, now then, one more in this color, and that's these leaves. But actually, I'm going to save those until I've digitized these. So I will zoom in here. 
and to digitize these again it's the closed shape actually could I use the blocks I'll use digitize blocks I'm going to choose red as the color um, just so it stands out from the others at the moment and I'll come back and sort that out in a while I'm going to leave satin stitch as my choice and I'll start here and again this is a mix of left and right clicks And then when I get to the end, press enter to set that in place. And as you can see, that's now kind of following that um, shape. Again, to get the mirror copy, we go to layouts, mirror copy horizontal. And we've got that second copy in place. Now what I want to do is duplicate them and change the size. So control and D to create the duplicate copy. Hold down the shift key as I click and drag for that second version. And then I will hold down again the control key as I select and move that object. Oops, come back. And I'm going to do the same for the third version, so control D, reduce it in size, hold down the control key, select and move. Ah, oh, I've only taken the one. So let's make sure I've selected both. Control and, oh, no, come back. There we go. maybe just a little bit more okay there we go that's those three leafy things in place I'm going to do the repetitions now uh, and I'll come back for the rest later There we go. Right now to get this one, I'm going to select these leaves. I'll press Control G to group them and then Control D to duplicate and I'll move them up here so they're in place. And then again, I'm using a minus rotation, minus 22.5. And then I'll just manually move them into place like so. That'll do. And then of course the circle layout to make the others. Okay. You can see how quickly this is coming together. Uh, now, what's next? I think I'll do the big leaves next. Actually, before I move on, I am going to change the color on these. So I'm holding down the shift key and clicking on each and then I'll change that color. Now I need a darker color here as well, so I'll select all of those. And then I don't have a green in here, so a dark green even. So I'm gonna bring up the threads palette and just type green in here and see what I get. I'll obviously maybe have to come back and change them later because 
I need to, um, oh, hello. I need to match them up with the thread colors that I've already got. There we go. So we can close that down, we can close that down. And now I said to do the leaves. So I'm going to keep the color as green, go to digitize, digitize closed shape. Um, for this one, I'm actually going to use a tatami stitch. And I'll leave it set as pattern style one and the color as emerald green. And then again, I'm just doing the digitizing with the left and right clicks. Enter to connect and enter again to set that stitch in place. Change in the angle. And then I need to mirror that. Now, if I select both of those, oops, what I don't want to select though are the two small green ones. And then circle layout. Pop, there we go. Now they are all currently on top of the other green leaves. Um, I'm going to resequence that now just so that it's still making sense for me. So if I select all of these green leaves, in fact, I'll just take the larger ones and then send them up the stack. You can see now that they're uh, below the green ones. What I'd like to do is use the remove overlaps feature now though to remove any excess stitching below these green leaves. There might be some, there might be none, but it's worth doing so that I don't get clogged up with excess stitches. So in the edit objects tool uh, box, remove overlaps, click on that and something has happened. Not sure what. If we hide those. So it's taken out a tiny bit of stitching, not much, but it's obviously enough to um, reduce the density, basically. Now, one other thing I would like to do before moving on is to branch all of this light green stuff. So I'll select all of that, go to Edit Toolbox, and choose Branching. And it's telling me here, press Enter for the entry point, and Enter for the exit point. I'm fine with that. Now, where has it put it? Oh, there. But I did miss off all of this stuff. Whoopsie. So if I undo that with Control Z, and as that other green stuff is towards the bottom, I'll shovel that down. Select the first one, shift and select the last one, and go for branching, enter and enter. So that's now, hopefully, created the branching effect. Just going to turn off true view to see a bunch of stuff. Uh, actually, I'll run it through the player. 
and I'll send that to the top so it stitches first. So you can see how it's reorganized all of the elements so that it can basically do all of the stitching in one continuous go without having to do jump stitches. So that saves us a job of clearing up later. And it looks like it's fine to me, so if I press stop, <coughs> excuse me, and I'll send that right back to the bottom again for now. Right, what's next? Let's have a go at the big flower. So this is made up of several sections, as you can see. So I'm going to digitize each one. Uh, so I need closed shape. We'll stick with tatami stitch. And I'll make this a pink color. So let's start at the back. Start just inside the flower shape. And there we go. Now I'll change that stitch angle so that it's basically pointing, let's say that way. And for the other copy, I will merge these ones, which means I will have to redo the stitch angle. Yep, that will work. Now we'll go back and digitize the center of the flower. Close shape again. Good. I'm going to leave that as a horizontal um, stitch. So now I can go back and do. Actually, they'll need to be on top. So if I do these petals next. As you can see, I'm not being 100% accurate. I'm just getting the overall impression. Now for this particular um, stitch angle, I'm going to go to effects and choose radial fill. Now something weird happened there. So if I go into reshape, what I'm going to do is move the hole from the radial fill to where it kind of comes horizontal with that. And you can see now how they're all um, fanning out from that central point, which is lovely. Now for the leaves, I'm actually going to hide the other three so I can see what I'm doing. So I do that in the sequence uh, docker. And then digitize close shape again. And then for the stitch angle on this one, I'm just going to go like that. 
create the second one with the mirror and copy tool and I don't want to merge these two this time and then let's unhide everything else so we can see if it worked yes that looks good to me what I am going to do though is hmm, am I going to do that Let's see if it makes a difference or changes anything. Let's uh, try branching this. Hmm, okay. It did it, but it's changed all of my stitch directions. So I'm gonna undo that. And instead I'll just group it. Now what I'd like to do is create an outline for it. So that would be in create layouts toolbox, create outlines, object outlines, triple run. And I think I'll keep it at uh, this color it's selected as. And I basically want it just around the whole outside. So I'm gonna do common outlines. If I zoom back in, hopefully you'll see a bit clearer. You can see it's basically put an outline around the entire flower rather than the individual shapes. That's good for me. Uh, now there's one weird bit in the middle and I'm just going to delete that because it's unnecessary. I'm going to ungroup these and then group everything because it's all going to be the same color. And then of course we're going to do the circle layout for the other flowers. Lovely. Now a couple of more things to do. That's these small flowers and then obviously the border. Um, this circular border is very quick to put in. We can do that right now. We'll do circle, we'll do outline, I'm going to use a satin stitch for this and it will be in the green color that we've used already. Click to start the center point, drag your circle out until it's roughly around the right size and then press enter twice. I'm going to drop the size of this down, uh, the width, sorry, of the satin stitch. Uh, I need to select the object first, don't I? Silly John. That's nice, yep. We can work with that. Now that might be slightly off at the moment, but what I'll do is group everything in a while and then um, align things. So let's do the flower. Now for this, I will use closed shape. I'm gonna set this color blue and then apply a fill. We'll go with we'll go with satin for now. So I'm doing a sharp point in the valleys and then a curved point at the hills. And they're roughly equidistant. So you should be able to, even if your picture's quite pixelated like this, you should be able to get an idea of where those points need to be. Okay, it's not great. It's not kept the shape too brilliantly, but we're going to try applying a radial fill. And that's given this nice circular center. In there I'd like to put a circle. And remember because of pull compensation we don't go here, we go just a little bit beyond. Now I'd like that to be orange. Okay, 
just going to select both of those and then from the alignment choose align centers just so they're bang on top of each other I'll group them and then of course I'm going to use the um, radial fill the circle layout to apply the others I've actually chosen not to dig digitize the dots because I think they're just going to add a lot of unnecessary jump stitches and stitching. There we go. That's those. Now I need one for starting this uh, outer border. So Control D to oops to copy it. No, get off. Just want this. Now, for the circular layout on this, I need 32, but I'm not sure this goes up to 32. Hmm, we've got 30, we've got 35. Can I type in the number? Yes, I can. Excellent. Learned something new. Click. Wow, there we go. So 32 flowers created in an instant. Now, I think that's us pretty much done. So this has taken a while so far, so what I'm not going to do is show you the recoloring. Um, but I'll very quickly run through some resequencing. So I'm going to hide the picture so we can see the main design. So all of the green stuff is going to stitch first, the dark green stuff, that's fine. Let's see if we can apply a branching to that. The answer was yes, which is good. Hopefully it doesn't create too many jump stitches. Uh, let's select and see. Uh, so jump, 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 jump. So the in and out point is there. I think that should be fine. We'll see when it stitches out. The light green stuff is going to stitch on top of that. That's fine. Uh, actually, I need to find the border, don't I? and then bring that up. Then we'll be stitching. I'm going to put the blue flowers next. I basically want the large pink flowers to be last, so I'll move those down. Now these things, there's going to be a whole heap of color changes unless I resequence these. So we are going to ungroup them. We'll select all of the blue flowers, which you know there are quite a few of. Move those up because we want those to come first so now they're all together so control oh let's just check are there any further down no there aren't so control G to group those green border again we need to shove right back up we 
orange dots next. We're going to group those. And then everything else is hopefully in order. So let's run that quickly through the player and just see how that works out. I'll speed it up considerably so we can see. Okay, yep. Green stuff next, which is branched, then the border, then the flowers, more flowers, then the centers of the flowers, and then finally the large pink flowers. Okay, and everything's working radially. Um, doesn't look like it's going to be going, you know, all over the place with jump stitches, so I should be able to manage those in between each color. And if we take a look at the colors uh, section on the sequence tab, we can see we have just one, two, three, four color changes. Good. Five colors, four color changes. Right. So obviously next I need to save it and export it uh, with export design in the format for my br uh, brother embroidery machine. So I will very quickly do that head over to the machine, stitch it out, and I will join you back here to show you the result. And here's the finished piece. It's stitched out really well. There were quite a few jump stitches around the outer objects, but that's fine, I anticipated that. Um, but other than that, I really enjoyed the process and loved the finished result. Uh, obviously, if you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up before you go today. And of course, feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear from me again in the future. For now, though, thanks for watching.